Bruchem Aboim. Welcome, everyone, and welcome to our home. Um, so, again, like we have the two-part series we'll do with my thought, and then there'll be a musical rendition on s songs that I've uh, written, and I will be performing after this class, so there'll be that class, my thought, and again, and then the music, original music afterwards. So, this week on my thoughts, <clears throat> I would like to examine if there is anything special about this year, the year 2023. There are many different New Years that are followed uh, today, to be exact. There are 26 different New Years that are celebrated throughout the world by certain religions and countries. For example, we, as Jews, are in the Jewish year of 5783. Though there are many different calendars still, the world at large follows the Gregorian calendar. But the question is, why? You know, we have a belief, according to Kabbalah, that the world can only exist for a period of 6,000 years. In addition, we also have a belief that world history has been divided up into three separate time periods. The first 2,000 years, we refer to as the period of Tohu, void, a time in world history that was dictated by the concept of might made right. As it states in the portion of Noah 6.13, Ki molehoretz chamos, for the earth was filled with violence, a period of time that existed without the guidance of the Torah. The end results of this lawless, lawless period was, initially, a flood that destroyed one-third of the world in the time of Anosh. Mankind failed to learn its lesson and change their errant ways, so it was followed by the flood a phenomenon which destroyed the earth and all of its inhabitants, except for Noah and his family, in addition to those animals that were sequestered with him in the ark. Though the moral level of humanity improved after the flood, still it was not enough, and so it was followed by the generation of dispersion, the time when God dispersed all of mankind to the four corners of the earth. The second 2,000 years is referred to as the period of Torah, it began with the birth of Abraham Avinu, Abraham our father. He was the first individual to spread monotheism throughout the world. Then in the year 2448 of creation, God Almighty gave his precious Torah as a gift to the Jewish nation on the mountain of Sinai. This event brought godliness down to this physical world. Now the third 2,000 year period is referred to as the era of the Messiah, a time when the world will fulfill its final destiny and enter into a new dimension, one predicated by peace and tranquility, a time when all of mankind will truly recognize and acknowledge that there is a God in the world and that we are all honored and privileged to be able to serve him. May he come quickly and in our time. So the question remains, why is it that the whole world in one form or another is following this Christian calendar? We have a belief that since the first 2,000 years of creation existed without the Torah, God Almighty has given us the mission of correcting those years, what we refer to as a tiken ha'olam, a correction of the world. And we witnessed that in the year 1948 of creation, that Abram Avinu, Abraham our father, was born. Then in our modern day Christian calendar in the year 1948, the state of Israel was created. This fact is not a coincidence, since we know that nothing that happens in this world is an accident. So following that theme, in the first book of the Torah in the portion of Lechlecha, we read that in the year 2023 of creation, when Abram Avinu, when Abraham our father, was 75 years old, he was told by God Almighty Lech Lecha to go away. God instructs him that he should leave his land, leave his birthplace, and leave his father's house. He is told to go to the place that God Almighty would show him. That place, of course, was the land of Canaan, later to be known as the land of Israel. Now, the Torah does not usually tell us the age of biblical characters. <clears throat> Excuse me, when it does, there is something connected to that age that we should know. 
that being the case, then why does the Torah mention that Abraham, our father, Abraham, our father, was 75 years old when God instructed him to Lech Lecha, to travel? Why is his age an important fact for us to know? Uh, is it possible that God Almighty was hinting to the fact that in this year, 2023, of our modern-day Christian calendar, that he will instruct us to Lech Lecha, to leave our land, leave our birthplace, and leave our father's house, and travel to the land that he will show us, again, the land of Israel. We are told that when a spaceship is returning from outer space, it must first locate a window to enter through before it can re-enter Earth's atmosphere, so too in life. There have been specific days and times that God Almighty has designated for special events to occur. As I've mentioned before, many times, nothing is an accident. An example of this statement can be seen in connection with the building and the dedication of the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the desert. We read in the Torah that the children of Israel were zealous in their response to God's command to build for him a dira betachtonim, a dwelling place in this lower world, the tabernacle. This command was given to the nation after the sin of the golden calf. The fact that God desired to have his residence constructed amongst the people of Israel was received with great enthusiasm by them. They correctly viewed it as a sign that God Almighty had forgiven them for their participation in the grievous sin of the golden calf. So, in their great excitement, they finished its construction in only three months. The date was on the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kislev. Now, even though the construction of the tabernacle was completed, God Almighty did not allow them to erect his house for another three months. They had to wait, exhibit patience, until the first day of the Hebrew month of Nisan. On that day, they were finally given permission to erect and dedicate God's house. Now, the reason that they sinned in connection with the golden calf was impatience. True, Moshe was late, but nonetheless, they still should have waited for him to return from the mountain. Their tshuva, their repentance, for their impatience was to now wait patiently until that moment when God Almighty would decide that it was the correct time for them to erect his house. The day that the tabernacle was finished was the 25th day, of, as I mentioned, of the Hebrew month of Kislev. The angel that represented that day presented a complaint to God Almighty. It felt that it had been deprived of the honor and privilege of God's house being dedicated on its day. So God assured the day that it would be compensated for its concern. God Almighty informed the day that it would be rewarded with not a one day of celebration, but with a eight-day holiday that would be observed for centuries, the holiday of Hanukkah, which begins on the night of the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Kislev. God orchestrated that a special event should occur on this very special day. Again, nothing is an accident. The fact that the Torah mentions that Abraham Ravinu, Abraham our father, was 75 years old when he was told by God Almighty to travel to the land of Israel may well be a sign for us that this year, 2023, is a window of opportunity for us to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sukkenu, I repeat, an opportunity, not a guarantee. All the signs that our early prophets have told us are all around us. World chaos, children rebelling against their parents, a total breakdown of morality, a world recession, women who are unable to give birth now bearing multiple children at one time through fertility drugs, children bringing their parents back to Judaism, Look at the presidency of the United States. All three of the last presidents, according to the national order, should not have won. We have a belief that Mashiach will come when we all give up hope. What does that actually mean? You know, I remember when the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson of blessed memory, was alive. 
I would get up every morning and say to myself that today the Rebbe will tell the world that he is the Messiah. He was a well-known religious figure. It seemed to be a real possibility. However, as we know, the Rebbe died. But before he did, he told his followers that we are the last generation before the coming of the Messiah. He said that he had done all that he could do and that now it was up to his Hasidim, so to speak, to jump into the sea and make the Messiah appear. Now, if someone were to ask you to define our modern world with only one word, word what would that word be? I believe the word would be speed. We have no patience at all. We expect everything to occur now at warp speed. Computers, microwaves, communication, a need for instant gratification. The world is on steroids. This too is a sign of the coming of the Messiah. We are in the period of time in our history that we can refer to as the plug, a time in the latter part of a Friday afternoon when a Orthodox Jew is permitted to usher in the Shabbat early. So what does an Orthodox Jew do before the Shabbat? They run faster and faster as the day goes on so that they can hopefully finish all of their Shabbat preparations before the Holy Day begins. The world, too, is running towards its destiny. The world is running towards the coming of Mashiach Tzukain. May he come quickly and in our time. When you are in a stormy sea and the ship is threatening to capsize, if you look up to the bridge and there you see the captain and he is holding the wheel firmly, as you look up at him you can see the strength and confidence on his face. Well, you feel comforted by the fact that he is in attendance and that he seems to have the situation well in hand. You are confident that everything will be fine. However, if you look up to the bridge and there's no one holding on to the wheel, no one is navigating the ship, then you are without any hope. At that moment you ask yourself, as it states in Psalm 121, May I and Yavu Ezri, from where will my salvation come? The psalm continues, Ezri, me im Hashem ose shemayim va'aretz, that my salvation will come from God, the maker of the heaven and the earth. We have to know with complete certainty that there is a loving Father in heaven who only wants to bring happiness and joy into our daily lives. He wants to shower us with peace and serenity. The only thing necessary for our salvation to materialize is for us to realize that there is only one way and only one God in heaven who can bring us to our final reward. As we say three times daily in the Amida, Yeshua Kivisi Kohayom, for your salvation, we hope, every day. You know, just like a spaceship returning back to Earth depends on the assistance and direction of the team of scientists and engineers on the ground to re-enter and land safely, so too do we have the power and the ability to usher in the coming of the Messiah, not with computers and satellites, but with our observance of Torah and mitzvot. And just like NASA cannot bring a spaceship back safely from outer space without the joint effort of all of those on the ground, so too the Messiah will only appear when we finally come together in harmony as the Torah commands us, V'yahavta l'riyacha kamocha, and you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let us all join together and bring an end to all the hatred and controversy that exists in the world today. And with that, let us hope to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sakana quickly and in our time, this year, 2023. Let us hope that it comes size quickly. Again, thank you very much for listening. Again, we wish you all happiness and health and safety. God should bless you only with good. And Shabbat Shalom. Again, this will be followed by a musical rendition of uh, original songs that I've written. Thank you again for attending. God bless and be well.